Before dawn, mist swirls above the river. Near Horse Creek, Missy hides. Moonflower vines cover the trees and bushes. Across the river, two bald eagles perch in a dead tree. As Missy wriggles through a fallen branch, she stops. A deer wades into the water to drink. When it walks away, she swims on. Where County Road 761 bridges the river, she swims underwater. The rumbling of the traffic is not so loud. South of the bridge is an island. The lights of the Peace River Water Treatment Plant shine on one side. Taking water from the river and then treating it, the plant provides water to people in DeSoto, Charlotte, and Sarasota counties. Downstream of the bridge, the river curves and widens here. Boys mark crab traps. Near lunchtime, Missy floats close to the shore. From one fern, she grabs a green anole. A large alligator crawls onto the shore. A boat full of people turns toward them. A loudspeaker echoes across the water. Alligator to your left. A man says, Wow, that's the biggest one we've seen today. Standing beside him, another says, I'd say a good 12 feet. Many people hold cameras. As the boat nudges the shore, the alligator slides into the river. There he goes, folks, straight to the bottom. I hope you got a good shot of him. The loudspeaker says. The engine clunks into reverse. The boat shudders again and turns upriver. Missy stays away from the big alligator and the boats. She swims along the shore. Crowding out the large ferns and river grasses are Brazilian pepper trees. Above them, a red-shouldered hawk perches in a dead tree. Missy ducks beneath some water lily pads. They only grow here when the river's flow keeps the salt water in the harbor. Then her foot catches a plastic shopping bag. She pulls, but it is stuck. She tries swimming deeper into the water. Air caught inside the bag keeps it floating. She rips at the bag with her teeth and slips free. The channel splits again, and she takes the east branch of the river, known as Lettuce Lake, named for the plants that look like heads of lettuce. Many houseboats cluster near the boat ramp. Missy dives away from them. She swims along the bottom of the river. She feels something large, more than one, above her. She hides near a sunken log, and manatees pass above her. Hi, I'm Carol Mahler, author of Adventures in the Charlotte Har Harbor Watershed. Today, I'm at the television studios of the school district of Lee County, and with me is Anita Forrester. Hi, um, and I work in DeSoto County at the outdoor classroom, teaching environmental education. And Anita, I, you wrote some of the words in this book, and I, I hope you'll read them for us. I would love to, Carol. Um, and, and, and I wrote a section on visible pollution. Um, it says, sometimes you can see pollution in a river, such as plastic bags, fishing lines, soda cans, glass bottles, tires, or old tools. Some animals may think that the pollution is food, but when they try to eat it, they get sick. Other pollution can trap animals or plants so they can't move or grow, and pollution can also kill animals and plants. Many people who use the river collect litter that they find. Local communities also host river cleanup days to help the river and everyone can pick up litter in the river and on the land. Thanks for reading that, Anita. Now, have you ever participated in one of those river cleanups? Yes, Carol. Um, I participate, uh, well, every time I'm near the river, if I see um, pollution as, as, as plastic bags and bottles and things like that, I, I always uh, make a point to pick it up and and really, that's a very important thing to do. And there are also formal river cleanups where organizations will host a special day, have everybody come down to the beach with their, uh, have garbage bags and, and plastic gloves and walk the beaches. And I have participated in these coastal cleanups and was very surprised to find that the number one um, uh, polluter was, were cigarette butts found tons and tons of cigarette butts. Wow, that's something you don't really think of. Yeah. I think it's such a small thing when people throw it away, they don't think about it. But it really does add up. Well, Anita, thanks for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure being here, Carol.
Hi, I'm Carol Mahler, author of Adventures in the Charlotte Harbor Watershed. Today, I'm at the television studios of the school district of Lee County, and with me is Rick Tully. Hi, uh, I'm with the Environmental Education Program of the school district of Lee County, but right now I would like to read some text written by Curtis Porterfield of the Polk County Natural Resources Division. He wrote to us about salinity. Salinity measures the saltiness of water. Many chemicals can be salts, but the most familiar one is the salt used on foods known as sodium chloride. All water has some salt because as water moves, it picks up salt from the ground. Rivers, lakes, and streams are fresh water, which is not very salty. Estuaries are where fresh water meets the sea. Their waters are often called brackish, which is saltier than fresh water. The sea is salt water and has a lot of salt in it. The saltiness of the water affects where aquatic plants and animals live. Some animals and plants like salty water, and so they live in the sea or estuaries. Others don't like salty water, and so they only live in fresh water. Thanks for reading that, Rick. Now, salinity sounds like a very natural occurrence. Does it ever become a problem? It does at times, particularly as we as humans try to manage and, and uh, maintain uh, the freshwater systems. One of the things that we often do is hold back water in, uh, that we collect during wet times so that we can use it in drier times. And sometimes we have to release a lot of water that we've collected because we're, we're expecting a big storm. What this does is uh, flushes a lot of fresh water down natural rivers at one short period of time. And that can either push the salt water further out our estuaries toward the Gulf of Mexico, or in, in, when we're holding the water back, allow that salt water to move further up our streams and rivers than it would naturally. That changes, uh, that change in salinity affects what plants can survive and grow in those areas, and then consequently affects the animals that live there. Well, thanks for that explanation, and I've enjoyed talking with you today. Thank you. Peace River turns west where it meets Shell Creek. Upstream, the creek is dammed. It creates a reservoir for the city of Punta Gorda water treatment plant. Downriver, Missy floats under the bridge of Interstate 75, where six lanes of traffic zoom across. Homes and docks line the southern shore. Soon she passes some cement picnic tables near a historic hunting and fishing lodge. It was named Eagle's Nest Lodge because a pair of eagles nested in a nearby pine tree. A woman and a man sit at a table. Missy hears the woman say, Many famous people used to fish here. What did they catch? The man asks. She says, The harbor was full of fish. Snook, redfish, mullet. Has sport fishing cleaned them out? He asks. Maybe. Maybe commercial fishing. I don't know. She says. I heard more than a thousand people a day move to Florida. Maybe the harbor only has room for so many living things. There used to be more fish. Now, there are more people. He, he says. Missy paddles away. Section 12, Alligator Bay. Missy wiggles through the roots of the mangroves. She follows the shore, past condominiums and houses. She swims by Lashley Park beneath the fishing pier and past the marina. She sees anhingas perched on the power lines that span the river, as evenly spaced as beads on a string. On the south shore is Punta Gorda. The man who founded the town gave the waterfront as a gift to the people living there. Along the river is Gilchrist Park, named for a local resident who was governor of Florida from 1911 to 1913. 
Missy crosses the harbor in the shadow of the U.S. Highway 41 bridges. She moves from one piling to another. Where the water is deep, she dives. She scoots away from a huge grouper. When she is halfway across, she hears a spray of water. A dolphin comes out of the water to breathe. Another two follow. Then a brown pelican crashes beak first into the water to catch a fish. Finally, she reaches the northern shore. Charlotte Harbor is the oldest community in Charlotte County. Cattlemen and commercial fishermen live there. Missy swims through the pilings for docks, along the shore of Bayshore Live Oak Park, and past the Charlotte County Historical Center. Here, seawalls edge the bank. A brown palm frond shakes loose in the wind and falls on Missy. She swims beneath it for a while. Then she squirms between the fronds. Now it is her raft. In the distance, she can see the Port Charlotte Beach Complex and fishing pier. Canals and houses crowd around it. The current pushes Missy west, where the shore is green. Maybe Missy has found a home in Alligator Bay. For free classroom materials, please visit our website at www.chnep.org.